Navigating the current car market can be a daunting task, with its varying inventory levels and volatile prices. Buyers aren't as willing to pay astronomical prices that dealers were charging just recently. However, not all car models are feeling the brunt of this change equally. Because many automakers miscalculated the demand for some cars and SUV models, leading to an oversupply at dealerships. Meanwhile, certain models simply have no buyers, worsening the situation. Given these circumstances, knowledge truly is power. A critical piece of this knowledge is market day supply. That tells the number of days it would take to sell all of a particular model of car based on the current sales rate. We used car edge data to identify which new cars sitting at the dealer lot for the longest time. Before we go, if you're new here, please consider subscribing so you won't miss our future videos. Number 10. Maserati Levant When you hear Maserati, you think luxury car that everyone and their mama would like to drive, right? Well, this vehicle looks attractive and has some curves on it that give it that distance Italian look. It turns out that with a market day supply of 301, the data shows that people aren't willing to compromise the high ticket price for the exclusivity of driving something people don't see every day. It's also largely due to the people's perception of the brand. While a good chunk of people find Maserati to be a proper Italian luxury marquee, others find them to be endless money pits. Consumer Reports puts the model towards the bottom of the pile for reliability among similar models. That's based on the owner survey feedback. Some had to put up with rattling interiors, while others had infotainment issues. But perhaps the most common concern is the interior plastics being very cheap, offering no sense of quality for a $100,000 priced SUV. Number 9. Jaguar F-Type when the Jaguar F-Type was new, it represented a return to form for the British brand once known for its exhilarating sports cars. But a lot has changed since this two-door model debuted, and the front-engine, two-seat coupe or convertible now faces stiff competition from newer mid-engine offerings such as the Chevrolet Corvette and Porsche 718. On the other hand, consumers question the reliability of these cars. Plus, cheap materials and quality have put people turn away. And if you're going to spend that type of money, why not go with Mercedes or Porsche? As per Car Edge report, dealers have to sit on these cars 315 days at the current phase of sales. The sporty Jag runs slightly over 100 grand, and while it's stylish and a performance-based vehicle, but the demand just isn't there. Ironically, gender comes into play here as men typically go with other brands of similar style while women go for the Jaguar look and the data shows most women aren't shopping around for sports cars. Number 8. Ram 2500 The Ram 2500 is a top-notch, full-size truck with excellent design, high towing capacity, and outstanding performance. The automaker revised its 2500 heavy-duty pickup trucks with an eye toward making them quieter, more luxurious, and smoother riding and with increased towing and hauling abilities. Nevertheless, we can say that the number of days supply is far more than it needs to be for a truck like Ram 2500. Dealers right now carry a good chunk of these trucks in their lot, which converts to a market day supply of 318. Ram sales overall last year were down 7%. Not everybody needs a Ram 2500 pickup truck. Heavy-duty trucks are expensive to maintain compared to the F-150. 14 miles per gallon is what you get in these bad boys, and with the spike in fuel prices, this isn't something people are seeking at this moment. Number 7. Audi e-tron GT Audi e-tron GT's base price went from $104,000 as brand new to $63,000 as a used car in just one year. They say when you drive off the lot, the car depreciates, but sheesh, that's like taking an express elevator down. There have been many concerns among current owners on the ongoing time required to fix any maintenance issues the car runs into, as most US Audi dealers don't have the right tools and parts to fix them. Above all else, the Audi e-tron's painfully limited range is a serious problem. 2024 Audi e-tron GT offer a max range of 238 miles on full battery. If EVs such as the e-tron ever wish to succeed, they're going to need to do better than that. 
Driving down the highway in your gas-powered vehicle and needing to fill up? Even in the middle of nowhere, you can rest easy knowing the average distance from one gas station to another is just 3.5 miles in America. You cannot say the same for electric vehicles. As per CarEdge inventory report, there are close to a thousand units idling at dealerships with 327 days of market supply. Well, no doubt the recent recall issued by the brand also adding fuel to the number of days on the lot. As per the recall, affected vehicles could suffer liquid intrusion into the battery, potentially causing damage or fire. Number 6. Ram 3500 There are nearly 3,000 Ram 3500 waiting to find a home. Unless 3,000 people suddenly want a diesel truck, we may not see that number come down anytime soon. As per CarEdge data, that's a 342 days worth of market day supply. Despite a lot of awesome towing and payload capacities of this truck, the diesel engine is quite noisy. Buyers will have to decide if the capabilities are worth the extra sound pollution. They come paired with an outdated transmission system. The lack of an available manual transmission is unfortunate. Diesel versions of the Ram 3500 come stock with an older 6-speed automatic transmission. If you want a 10-speed automatic transmission, it's going to cost you more. But it's a workhorse of a truck, and there doesn't seem to be much wrong with the vehicle. The market for them have simply dried up in recent years. Number 5. Chrysler 300 Remember when Chrysler 300s were in music videos and were the talk of the town as an affordable mock version of a luxury car? Well, now is not what we saw a dozen years ago. Chrysler announced recently it will slash its two-car range in half for the 2024 model year by giving up on the aging 300 sedan. It's going away after a long 17-year run, during which it has been overhauled and updated more times than we can remember. Even around the time of its introduction, the 300 was seen as a model trying to resurrect a dying breed of American car. The affordable, large V8 sedan, of which there weren't that many left even 20 years ago. With this in mind, the fact that it has remained on sale since, and has proven quite successful until the end, is a remarkable feat. But the times have caught up to Chrysler, now part of the Stellantis Group, and it's now looking to enter the EV segment. The data shows there are 5,000 plus units to move, and it takes about 346 days to do so. So get them while you can if you're looking to pounce on the opportunity to roll out in a Chrysler 300. Number 4. Dodge Challenger You know Americans gotta love a good muscle car. Well, I thought that was the case. Turns out 24,000 of these puppies are still at the pound. That's about 360 days of market supply at the current phase. Why? Perhaps unsurprisingly, increasingly stringent emissions regulations have forced Dodge to reevaluate the future of its muscle cars. All of its models, powered by internal combustion engines, ICE, are set for an electrified future. Stellantis is currently working towards its goal of increasing battery electric vehicle sales. The company has set itself the ambitious target of selling 5 million EVs annually by 2030. In order to achieve this, they have to take their foot off the gas of making and marketing gas-powered vehicles. In a similar vein, increased demand for practical SUVs has led to many manufacturers producing seriously powerful performance variants of such models. So a lot of factors at play here, but man are these some sweet cars. Number 3. Ford Mustang Mach-E Wow, a Ford ended up in the top 3. How is that possible? Especially considering they had the number one vehicle sold in 2023. But the F-150 is a different beast. The car maker used the most popular nameplate for its first electric crossover to stand out on the EV wave. Turns out, Americans haven't bought into the EV wave on a Stang. No matter how cool it looks, it's not the same as putting your pedal to the metal and hearing that engine scream back at you. It's not a total failure, but 24,000 cars remain on the lots, and that's a market day supply of 362. No wonder why the automaker announced a major price cut for the 2023 model year. The new adjustments will bring at least one version of the Mach-E below $40,000 for the first time. Number 2. Dodge Charger 
The Charger, similar to the Challenger, might find its appeal constrained to a niche demographic within the muscle car segment. There was a big drop in purchases of these types of vehicles, and no matter how many Fast and Furious movies they make, the younger generation doesn't seem to be pulling the trigger on these cars. Probably that's why Dodge has officially confirmed that the Dodge Charger and Challenger were discontinued after 2023. But over 33,000 Dodge Chargers already hit the dealers and waiting for a new home. As per Car Edge data, that's a 477 days worth of market supply. We see Dodge as the most cars struggling on the list, and it seems America is getting out of Dodge. Pun intended. That's a great joke, and you should smash the like button after that one. Number 1. Dodge Hornet Another Dodge to take the number one title here. But seriously, the Dodge Hornet is doing terrible. It's priced at around $41,000, but it seems like you can't pay people to drive it home. As per the data, it would take 480 days to clear the current inventory, and that's about a year and a half. There are close quarters that make shoppers look elsewhere when considering an SUV. The Hornet is actually closer in size to a subcompact SUV than some of its primary compact competitors, all of which have grown larger with each redesign. While some buyers may appreciate its tidy footprint, the inevitable result is less interior room. Most six-footers should still find sufficient legroom in either the front or rear seats, but there isn't a whole lot of passenger or cargo room to spare. If you have a big family or like keeping a stroller and some groceries in your trunk, this vehicle may not be for you. Alright, time to get out of Dodge ourselves. That wraps up our list. I hope you enjoyed the content and gained something from it. If so, please smash the subscribe button so you can stay in the loop on the car world.